All right, guys, we've seen a lot of car collections. We've covered a lot of really interesting stuff in the time that we've had the channel and in all my years of doing Mustang stuff as uh, editor of Muscle Mustangs and Fast Forward Magazine. But never have I ever, ever encountered a collection of cars that has got me so excited and I cannot wait to bring this to you. This is probably gonna be one of my favorite videos to do. I'm with my buddy Dave here and he has amassed what is absolutely the coolest collection of Mustangs, late model Mustangs to be uh, specific, that I've ever seen in my entire life. Dave, what do we have here? <laughs> it's, uh, I guess you could call it a lifetime of passion for, uh, for the Mustangs and Ford. Uh, just something when I was able to start doing more of uh, collecting and finding great things. It just ended up to be this big. I don't know how, but uh, but you'll, you guys saw a little bit before the video, and we'll see during the video. It's uh, hope everybody enjoys it and uh, brings back a lot of good memories from from back in the day when we were all kids. Yeah, this is going to be a really fun day. We've even got a special guest who's going to be on camera in a little bit, so you'll have to hang out for a little bit, and uh, we're going to bring you some neat cars: the Fox Body Mustangs, the SN95 Mustangs, current Mustangs. Dream Mustangs are about to go down today. We're in an undisclosed location. Don't want to tell you where we are, but I don't even know if I'm alive right now. I could be dreaming. <laughs> so this is going to be a cool thing here. So let's get to it, Dave. We're going to show you the stuff. I don't know where to start. We'll just pick one and go for it. All right, so in trying to figure out which car to start with, because I could start with any of them, we're going to start with this one right here. And the reason is, is because it's near and dear to my heart. 50LX. This one's an 89. Mine was an 87. But this car reminds me of Neil Van Opry's Cabernet Red 88 Mustang that I used to read about in Cars Illustrated and in Muscle Mustangs and Fast Forwards before I started working there. It's Cabernet Red like Neil's car. It's got the red interior. It's got a five speed. I don't remember if Neil had a saddle interior red. I can't remember. He'll have to uh, chime in stick man on that one. But Dave, Tell us about this car right here. It is pristine. Yeah, like, like a lot of the cars here, I mean, this one has 600 miles on it. Uh, red interior, like uh, Evan said, all original down to the gator backs. Uh, we, uh, it, it's, it's cleaned and detailed properly. Looks like it came right out of the showroom. You guys were in it before. It smells factory Ford. Uh, it's got that, that deep plastic smell in there that we all knew when we went to the dealerships. And uh, it was just a great example, I thought, that really uh, had a lot of meaning with the LX and, and such the simplicity of the LX compared to the 5-liter five, five uh, GTs at the time. I just thought it was a neat car to have in this collection to represent the time. Yeah, I mean, I see this car and immediately I think 10-minute tune-up. I'm like, I'm like, I want to turn the distributor. I want to put a short belt on it. Where's my bag of ice? I want to start power shifting this. Let's take a look under the hood yeah, and uh, scope out that 5-liter uh, 225 horse engine. This is always the best part, pop on the hood. Look at that, man. Oh my God. I'm trying to be so careful. These cars are perfect. Wow. I mean, just ripe for the bag of ice. <laughs> yes, the silencer is in there. You're not going to really be able to see it. It's kind of dark. Here we get, I mean, look at the hood liners. Perfect. It's, it's just was uh, very well cared for over its uh, short life on the road. And uh, again, just uh, for somebody looking to look, see what these cars look like when they came new, this, this, is, this is one of them. Yeah, this collection is just, everything is well preserved. It's like going back in time. I just want that 70 and a half inch short belt. <laughs> Unbolt this, knock the uh, little nib off, turn it down a little bit, and you got two tenths in the quarter mile. Unbelievable, right? Yeah, we, we can't leave you here alone. No, no that would be a bad thing to be here alone. I'd be so bad. All right, Dave, so let's move along. Okay. I love this car. I want to take it home with me. You won't let me. <laughs> Probably shouldn't even leave me in here by myself. The keys are locked up, don't worry. <laughs> this right here is a special car. It's sitting up high. It's got a lot of weird stuff going on because it's a prototype Mustang. And back in the day, I actually made passes down the quarter mile in this car. Yes. Um, so I'm reminiscing a lot right here. Dave, tell me about what we got. So this is a 93 notchback that was, uh, was designed to house the eventual 96 Cobra motor in here. So when you, this was a Jersey car, it was, it was tested in Jersey after it came, came from Michigan. 
Um, you can see it sitting a lot higher because it had the clear motor uh, in the suspension. Wouldn't be able to do that on the stock box body platform. Had five lugs. These are actually 94 GT wheels that were just painted black to, to accommodate the, fi the five lug wheel pattern. Um, I think I think most of the story of this car is underneath the hood. So I think we need to pop the hood and show, right. you, show you what's in here. Let's do it. And you can see the uh, chicken wire grill. I mean, this car was raw. This is an actual uh, prototype from Ford. There were two of these. Uh, one one was drag race quite a bit. It was a uh, it was either the Calypso coral or teal color. Yeah, I think it was Calypso coral. You're right. And that one, Jim Diamore had. Man, he made a lot of laps. I drove that car too, actually. Um, this one, luckily, this one only has 200 miles on it, so this one was cared for nicely uh, and, and preserved well. Uh, we were talking earlier how you had the uh, the prototype parts on here were dated for '96, but actually were made in '94. Right. So, uh, so it's, it's really there's a lot of neat history in here, probably more than you guys know than me for sure. Uh, dealing with these cars in the day, but this is all original uh, as as it came out of the and whatever you guys did to it, obviously, in English town. I, if this car could talk, we could probably get some good stories out of it. Oh, I'm sure. oh my God. I think that, <laughs> if I remember, Joe Amato from Downs Ford had this car for a while, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, he drag raced it, and people went nuts when they popped the hood because you, you couldn't imagine that there was anything other than a pushrod V8 that was going to be in a Mustang. But uh, making the transition to the modular uh, power plants, this car and the Calypso car that he talked about, were really the cars that were when it, that got out there. And if you think about how Ford does things now, it's amazing because they would never do that. They would never turn over two prototype cars to a couple of drag racing guys who have shops and let them just go kind of do things. Mm -hmm. But they used to do that back in the day and they would get feedback. Um, and this is one of those cars and you can see a lot of the things that really, um, that really went into the later model cars. Some of the wiring harness stuff, you can see the way that they did the air box. This is the, the later style air box that went into the uh, 95, 6, 7, 8 Mustangs. Um, even the way it's bolted into the Fox body is, is amazing to see that it fits because, you know, the SN95 was a Fox body, but so much changed. Sure. Um, the big giant overflow and the way they did the cooling and everything, completely different than a 5 liter. And you wouldn't know it if the hood was down because, like you said, it still has a flat hood. They didn't use a cowl or anything like that, but there are giveaways. And somewhere I have pictures of this car, <laughs> which is just absolutely amazing to see. Um, I mean, this, this is a piece of history in that, in that time frame with, with the motor, Fox body, body with the 96 motor. To me, this is just one of the cooler cars around here. It's a really, really neat car. Yeah, Ford does engine swaps. <laughs> Let's check out the interior. Yeah, sure. Still brand new. Uh, this car on the clock has 249 miles on it. Uh, still smells brand new. So again, this they really didn't get too much of a workout, other than its original uh, testing and Evans uh, and uh, all the Jersey guys bringing this down English Town. But it's a very well preserved example, and we're just uh, really lucky to have it here. Just so many memories of just the magazine days, all the stuff we did. Wait, let's see if it's got the, uh... oh, there's that sound. You'd come out of the burnout box, neutral. Make that noise. Everybody knows that sound. If you're a five liter Mustang guy, that's like, you could shut your eyes and you hear that sound. You're like, where's the five liter Mustang? All right, guys, now I'm behind the camera and we're taking a look at an awesome 93 Cobra. One of my favorites. This one's in black. It's a special car to Dave. It's a prime example. And we're going to bring in our special guest, none other than Vinny Kung, my man, Spinny Vinny, Vinny the Hitman, our tech editor at Muscle Mustangs back in the day, and a Fox Body Nut. Guys, what's happening? So this is a 93 Cobra, uh, 12 miles on it, uh, all original, uh, down to the seat coverings, uh, the labels on the uh, outside of the car, I mean, brand new car. So uh, this is uh, one of my favorites. Uh, Recently, it's it's just, I mean, it's flawless. The the paintwork, uh, everything from down to when the thing was rolled off the truck at the dealership. Uh, obviously, this car came with a lot of advanced uh, mechanics in it, and really was the pinnacle of the Fox body in that era. 
uh, and uh, Vinny knows a lot more about that stuff than I do, so I'll just hand it over to him and he could explain a little bit more. Oh, Dave, thanks, first of all, for having such an incredibly preserved example, but what I think is really key is that, yes, this was the epitome of what a 93 Fox body could be. From the factory, as we all know, they built these cars to have a balance of power, braking, suspension, and so forth, but it also introduced many unique parts. Obviously, four-wheel disc brakes. Now, not the first time we saw it, but it was very unique here because this car had 17-inch wheels from the factory. Uh, some of you may know 93 Cobras had a very unique offset. So this wasn't just all stuff from the parts bin. These were unique to the 93 Cobra, not just the wheels, the brakes, and so forth. A lot of parts, which wound up becoming a precursor to everything that we would wind up seeing in the SN95s that came a year later. Now, what I love about this particular one is not just the fact that it's got low miles on it, but you've kept <laughs> all these decals here and the plastic wrap. Now, we've all heard about cars being in the wrapper, but if you look here at the River Rouge plant where these cars were assembled, the person who was driving the car down the assembly line would actually place the stickers as things were checked off. So that's why they are on the inside. You can't see them from out here. But what's cool is each time something got checked off, a stamp would go on, or you see you have the other things here, and then final acceptance, and then customer acceptance, which is quite frankly at that point, the point when the car was brought to a dealership. Who was the customer technically for the plant? Now, if we look in here, look at all the parts that are still there, right? Everything, obviously, in this example is all original. But as you know, the 90 uh, and up cars had a slightly different gray interior. So this was the lighter titanium gray and it's an immaculate condition here. <laughs> Obviously with 12 miles, I mean, this thing has never been outside. You don't see anywhere on this car. Or even the wrap on the steering wheel is still there. Yeah, this thing is incredible. Dave, I mean, just to have us in here to look at these cars, look at this. Wrap acceptance. All this stuff had special meaning going down the assembly line. Yeah, it's even, got even chalk marks here on the back window. Floor mats and everything are still in the bags. It's uh, it, it's really a a neat thing to see. And and you know, one of the things about some of the '60s muscle cars uh, that you see, you, there are very very few examples of of original off off the factory uh, plant uh, cars. This one is one of them. And just to keep this car around for the future and to have people be able to reference it for, for restorations down the road when these cars, as they're becoming right now, uh, restored is, uh, is a pleasure to have and I, I hope this, a lot of people will benefit from cars like this in the future looking at them like this. And check this out. So here's one interesting thing. Even though this is a special Mustang, at the end of the day it was still a Mustang. Mass produced by the tens or hundreds of thousands. And if you look over here, there's a slight paint imperfection. I mean, this is the most perfect Cobra you can possibly find. But even on this car, there's a slight paint damage here, imperfection. And that's from the hatchback actually bouncing up and down during assembly and then eventually during shipping. And even all right, guys, so check this out. Dave, you got to tell me about this SSC, man. This is, I'm all about this right now. <laughs> so it's an 89 SSC, obviously, with a uh, bargain basement. Uh, MSRP of 43950 back in 1989, which we were just talking about was what, three times as much of an LX. These are like, Evan was just saying, like a, you were buying a Ferrari back in those days. Uh, this was the king of the hill. I mean, I remember reading about this car back in the day and just saying, oh my God, goodness, this was, that was a dream to own that car. Uh, and here it is. Uh, what do we say, about 615 miles on this car. Uh, all original, down to the general tires. Uh, all the original documentation. This car is is 100% uh, as it came from Celine. Take it from here. You oh know the rest. gosh, yeah. Well, what Steve Celine did to these cars was incredible. I mean, from start to finish, stem to stern, everything was gone through. Most of them started out as hatchbacks. There were some notchbacks, of course, um, and those are another story we can talk about one day. But what I loved about the SSCs was how rare they were. The graphics package was very unique to this car, and actually this is where a lot of this started from here. This car forward, this design graphic carried on to many Celine cars even to this day. Cool thing also is not just the relationship that Steve had with General Tire, but some other suppliers as well, as radar detectors and so forth. It was an option, but this car doesn't have it. But with only 615 miles, you can see how Oxford White is supposed to look. This has got clean slate, absolutely beautiful. 
So the full fit seats were even unique to this car. They were covered in cream and like gray leather and had a nice stripe in the middle as well, which complemented the rest of the car. Some interesting features too, four wheel disc brakes were on this, but the SSC had them actually slotted too. The rotors, the wheels were unique because they were also white and these were really big back then, this soft five spoke look. Um, and it stood the test of time in my opinion, especially on SSC and that's what really brings it all together. But my gosh, what the ultimate Fox body ever became was the SSC. Thank you for letting me see this and getting this close to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was always on the Fox bodies, uh, the Celines. I was always just a big fan of how simple that front splitter and then the nice flow on the rocker panels up into the whale tail. Classic Celine wing. I mean, that just, that was just the trademark of Celine right there is that body kit. Yes. And uh, it was simple, but it, to me, it looked like it belonged there. It didn't look aftermarket. And what's interesting is that I remember the Celines had the one-piece wing, because by 91, I believe they went to a two-piece design. But I think the one-piece was what they ultimately were known for and was the most functional spoiler. Um, and on this SSC, it just looks perfect. I mean, this is what the car was meant to look like, in my opinion. And I think the interior with the uh, rear seat delete was a, was a really cool option as well with the roll bar put in there, because the regular Celines didn't have that. And... Uh, for those uh, guys who just wanted something at the next level, uh, the, the, that, that just really set off that interior that Vinny just described even more. We should pop the, in, pop the door open oh, and- Gotta check this out. You can see how it's all leather stitched in here. Those, those uh, accenting like Vinny was talking about before. Uh, really smells like Italian leather in here rather than domestic leather, to be honest with you. And then of course you got the, uh, you got the rear seat delete. Uh, those are those are speakers in there uh, behind the uh, carpet there and uh, really makes that interior special. One of the many relationships that Celine had with other OE suppliers was Monroe and in this SSC you can see it has the adjustable suspension on it. This knob here allows you to go from soft, normal to firm which was very innovative at that time and it sits right next to the original power window switch. Also unique was uh, some of these Celine features, their own shift knob, but was this cruise control switch. So they were very particular about using six bolt pattern steering wheels with the three spoke design. And they standardized it by having their own billet aluminum mounts for the cruise control to still work. Now this was obviously the last year, 1989, because afterwards they wound up to go into an airbag design. So you couldn't have that anymore. But that's what makes this car even more special. A couple more of the Fox bodies that we have here. That's a uh, 93 Cobra R. Uh, that has 92 miles on it. That was one of the uh, lawsuit cars for people who uh, know those cars real well. The last seven were part of a lawsuit with Ford that happens to be one of them, still on MSO. Here's an uh, 88 GT with 134 miles on it, still bone stock. Evan hasn't messed with that one yet either, thank goodness. Got a 45 miles still on MSO convertible, black on black, 91 which could be the lowest mileage Celine Fox body in existence, a 15 mile uh, 89 Celine, uh, still on MSO, uh, still has the Ford window sticker on it. And then you got a uh, 90 ha uh, notchback with 82 miles on it. Uh, that car is bright red with gray interior. That's, uh, again, no modifications to any of these cars. They're all... Uh, as the 93 Cobra was bone stock. We got a couple of the four rides in the back. We got a 99 mile uh, jalapeno red 2R GT uh, with 99 miles on it, 86 convertible with 1600 miles on it. We got a uh, pace car uh, with 1100 miles on it. We have our uh, SVO with a little over a thousand miles on it, 86. And uh, which, which seems to be all of our favorite oddball car today, it's the 85 notchback. Uh, with with uh, less than a thousand miles on it. That's uh, Canyon Red with the red interior, uh, obviously carbureted car from 85. Just a neat little oddball car that we don't even know how, how it got built, but it's here and it's going to stay that way for a while. So uh, appreciate you uh, taking some time to look at the cars with me. All right, Dave, this has been an amazing day and it's still going to get better because we got part two coming up. But before we chime out, that 85 right there that Dave just mentioned is one of my favorites because I remember sitting in my bedroom as a kid flipping through Hot Rod Magazine and I came across Rodden at Random, which is their news section, and I saw 
wow, Ford makes a four barrel V8 car with a stick that you can buy that doesn't have all the GT stuff on it. It's real kind of really kind of like a sleeper. And I was huge into 60s and 70s sleeper muscle cars. The GT37 Pontiacs, um, cars like that were really my favorite, the understated cars. And that's about as understated as you get when it comes to late model Mustangs. So I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna have to have one of these things one day. Now, of course, I was still in school, I was young, and there was no way I was even coming close to a, affording a new car. But uh, when it finally came time for me to get a car, I got the 87 version of that, 505 speed LX, and it was my dream car and I still own it. It's an amazing thing to uh, be in a collection like this, Dave. Just blown away. So part two is coming up. You'll want to stay tuned. We're going to have that video up shortly. And uh, thank you for everybody for checking out our channel, Rev and Evan channel. Make sure you subscribe, leave a comment. Let us know which your favorite car is because I'm definitely coming back. And Dave said we could actually drive one or we'll take a couple outside. It's kind of not so uh, nice weather today. But when we come back, we'll do uh, you know a little bit more in-depth coverage of some of the cars here. So let us know what you think. And stay tuned for part two. Dave, thank you so much. As always, thank you.